In Perth, Australia, the Metronet project is executing one of the most ambitious transport overhauls ever seen, a $13 billion plan to completely reshape the city. This colossal undertaking involves laying 72 kilometres of new electric rail, building 23 new stations and elevating entire train lines over busy roads. To achieve this, engineers are unleashing 1,000 ton tunnel boring machines and hoisting concrete beams heavier than a blue whale into the sky. It is a project of unprecedented scale and complexity. So, with a budget that has spiralled out of control, how can engineers possibly bore massive tunnels under a live airport and a river, all while navigating a maze of unforeseen underground challenges? In the early 2000s, Perth was booming. Its population was exploding, projected to swell from 2 million to over 3.5 million by 2050. But this growth was sprawling outwards, creating vast suburbs with a deep reliance on cars. As a result, the city's arteries were clogging. By 2016, traffic congestion was already costing the economy an estimated $1.5 billion a year, a figure projected to more than double by 2031 if nothing was done. Perth had one of the highest rates of car use in the world and was on a dangerous path to having some of the most congested roads in the entire country. The Australian dream of a house in the suburbs was turning into a daily nightmare of gridlock. The solution, first proposed by the Labour Party in 2012 and launched as a core promise in the 2017 state election, was Metronet. It was a vision to fundamentally rewire the city with 72 kilometres of new passenger rail and 23 new stations, connecting the suburbs and breaking the city's crippling dependency on the car. The plan was audacious and the need was clear but moving from a political promise to physical reality required conquering immense engineering challenges. And the first great challenge lay deep beneath the city's international airport. The Forest Field Airport Link was the flagship project designed to connect the city's eastern suburbs to the central business district and, crucially, to the Perth Airport terminals. The engineering solution was to go underground but this meant tunnelling through some of the most difficult and sensitive terrain imaginable. The twin tunnels, each eight kilometres long with an internal diameter of over six metres, had to pass directly under active airport runways and dive 26 metres deep to cross beneath the Swan River. This was a high-stakes operation where any mistake could have huge consequences. To achieve this, engineers deployed two state-of-the-art tunnel boring machines or TBMs. These were not ordinary machines. Each TBM was 130 meters long and weighed 600 tons, with a 74-ton cutter head at the front designed to grind through the variable soil of sand, clay and rock. They were so massive that their components had to be shipped from a specialized factory in China and assembled on site in a 15-meter deep launch pit using enormous cranes, including a 700-ton crawler crane just to lift the main shield sections into place. In a tradition that dates back centuries, these mechanical giants were given female names for good luck. One was named Sandy, after the local Sangroper insect known for tunneling. The other was named Grace, in honor of a brave local primary school student who was battling leukemia, a choice made by her classmates who said she was the toughest person they knew. For nearly three years, Grace and Sandy burrowed beneath the city. The work was slow and dangerous. At one point in 2018, a sinkhole opened up, a stark reminder of the immense pressures involved in tunneling, and this incident contributed to a major delay in the project's timeline. Yet, the engineering behind the tunnels also showcased incredible innovation. A purpose-built factory churned out over 54,000 curved concrete segments to line the tunnels. But instead of using standard concrete, engineers developed a special triple blend mix that used 65% recycled materials. This change alone saved over 21,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. They also built a water recycling plant that treated and reused the water from the TBMs saving 2,740 megalitres of precious water. But while one part of Metronet was going deep underground, 
another was about to rise into the sky. In another part of the city, a different kind of traffic nightmare was unfolding every day. Along the Armadale line, six separate level crossings meant that boom gates were down for a combined total of more than three hours every single day. This created daily gridlock, frustrated drivers, and posed a constant safety risk. The solution was dramatic, lift the entire railway into the air. This project would create Perth's first major elevated rail line, constructing four kilometers of massive viaducts to carry trains over the roads. This meant completely rebuilding five existing stations, transforming them into modern elevated hubs. The engineering was monumental. The viaducts were constructed from over 530 huge, precast concrete L-beams. Each beam was 31 meters long and weighed a staggering 130 tons. That's heavier than a large blue whale. To lift these giants into place, six custom-built gantry cranes were designed and built specifically for the project. These specialized cranes could operate within a smaller footprint, which helped save surrounding trees and minimize the impact on local neighborhoods. The entire operation was so complex that it required a complete 18-month shutdown of one of Perth's busiest train lines, a massive disruption that forced thousands of commuters to find other ways to travel. It was a period of short-term pain for the promise of long-term gain, completely reshaping the suburban landscape. Not all of Metronet was about brute force. The Morley-Ellenbrook line presented a different kind of puzzle. This 21-kilometer line had to be built mostly within the narrow median strip of the Tonkin Highway, one of Perth's busiest freeways. Building a new railway with thousands of workers and heavy machinery right next to flowing traffic required a more precise, digitally driven approach. Here, the hero of the story wasn't a giant TBM, but a computer program. Engineers used an advanced system called Building Information Modeling, or BIM, to create a highly detailed 3D digital twin of the entire project before any construction began. This digital model contained data on over 30,000 individual assets, from concrete pillars to light fittings. It allowed engineers to spot potential clashes, coordinate between different teams, and manage construction with surgical precision. The five new stations on this line were also designed using a kit of parts approach with standardized, modular components that could be manufactured efficiently off-site and assembled quickly like a giant high-tech Lego set. Joining Network, Metronet also needed new trains and a smarter brain. The project delivered 246 new C-Series rail cars, the first to be built locally in Western Australia in over 30 years. Each 143-metre-long train can carry over 1,000 passengers and comes with modern features like more doors for faster boarding and USB charging ports. But the most important upgrade was invisible. The old signalling system was like a series of simple traffic lights, forcing trains to stay far apart. It was replaced with a futuristic communications-based train control system, or CBTC. This new system acts like a smart GPS network, where every train knows the exact position and speed of the trains around it. This allows them to travel much closer together safely, dramatically increasing the number of services that can run up to a train every two minutes in the network's core. These engineering marvels were transforming Perth's landscape, but behind the scenes, a different story was unfolding. One of spiraling budgets, missed deadlines, and a mounting human cost. Just how much was this progress truly costing? The project's cost exploded from an initial estimate of around $3 billion to a jaw-dropping total of over $11 billion, with some reports putting the final figure closer to $13 billion. In just one 12-month period, the cost ballooned by $2 billion alone. This wasn't just one budget blowout, it was a pattern across the entire program. The Yan Chep Rail Extension, originally budgeted at $420 million, ended up costing $1.2 billion, a nearly 300% increase. The Thornley Cockburn Link jumped from $535 million to $1.3 billion. 
While the government pointed to global supply chain issues and rising labor and material costs, critics blamed project mismanagement and reckless spending. This financial strain was compounded by project delays and a tragic human cost. The Forestfield Airport link, promised for 2020, opened over two years late in October 2022. The Ellenbrook line, promised for 2022, didn't open until late 2024. Even more devastating, a construction worker was killed on the Bayswater station site, leading to shocking allegations from the construction union that he was a sham contractor without proper insurance or benefits. The story of Metronet is a story of modern city building with all its incredible highs and devastating lows. It has given Perth a world-class transport network for the future, but at a cost far greater than anyone ever imagined. What do you think? Is the final result worth the immense cost and the controversies along the way? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you love deep dives into the world's most ambitious engineering projects, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next story.